This is an AMI This Week Shortcut. I'm Anthony McLaughlin for Accessible Media in Kitchener, Ontario. Rhonda Marie Avery was the first blind athlete to run the entire length of the Bruce Trail. Stretching 885 kilometers from Tobermory in the north, following the rocky escarpment all the way to St. Catharines near Niagara Falls in the south. Over 20 days and with the help of 50 guide runners, Rhonda Marie cut through the trail's rugged terrain with only 8% vision. She completed an intimidating feat to say the least, so on a much less daunting trail in Kitchener, I joined her for a run. So Rhonda, where are we today? Welcome to Homer Watson Park. This is the Grand Valley Trail, which is a 271 kilometer trail that runs up to Orangeville from uh, Lake Erie. And we're in one of your favorite places, outside running, which leads to my first question. How did you get into it? I think I started that process just like everyone else. You do the one minute run, the one minute walk, two minutes run, one minute walk, 5K, 10K, up to a marathon, just playing around with what you can and can't do. Rhonda Marie built her way up to more intense races as she learned how to run with guides through Achilles Canada, an organization that encourages people with disabilities to participate in running. She eventually heard about a man attempting to run the entire length of the Bruce Trail who was garnering a lot of support. Cody Gillies did the Bruce Trail in 2012 and he did an amazing job and it's not an easy trail to cover, lots of rocks, escarpment. I'm watching him do it, everyone was cheering him on, thinking can he break this record and the entire time I just sat back and thought, well he's 20 nothing and he's a firefighter, why couldn't he do this, what's stopping him? But if you transpose someone in there with a disability, what changes? And how would the people supporting him change their opinion of whether or not he could accomplish such a goal? And then, you know, you can't stand up and say we should make a change and sit back and do nothing and do something she did. Every day with the help of guides, she scaled the trail, a marathon a day, which could sometimes take up to 14 hours to complete. Catherine Kelly, who runs with Rhonda Marie on a regular basis, describes some of the language she uses to help guide Rhonda Marie. Part of what guiding is, is just letting Rhonda know where the, the traps are. Um, if there's a route in front of us to say route right, route left, route middle, or a rock, or if there's steep slope to one side, it's death to the left or death to the right. Or if it's not that steep, then it's just embarrassment to the left because you're going to fall, but you're not going to hurt yourself. On the Bruce Trail Run, this language got even more specific. We developed this sort of dialogue about what kind of rock, what would that feel like, what's that mud like? So mashed potato mud and scalp potatoes with gravy because the rocks would be these flat limestones with little kind of broken bits in between. If there was mud in there, you know, if you hit the edge, you're going down. That must have been so intimidating. I couldn't see it, it was fine. <laughs> so what motivates Rhonda Marie to take on such treacherous adventures? I think it comes from within herself. I think that if I were her, I mean, I would have enough of people telling me that I can't do something or I shouldn't be doing something or it's impossible for me to do something because of whatever shortfalls they think I might have. My whole point is to do these crazy, stupid things so that people will see, you know what, we don't have to live in a little box. We can color outside the lines. Rhonda wants others to know that they too can follow their own adventures and support is key. A lot of the times we don't know how to do these things, right? You can say, oh, go to a gym and use a treadmill, that's great, but how do I cross the road to get to the bus stop safely, to get to the gym, to find the front door, to find the ladies' locker room, to find the bench that leads to the step up over and across to the treadmill that may or may not be in use, and which buttons do I push? That's just as challenging to me as calling on my good friend Catherine saying, Catherine, I know you've been working for 12 hours, can we run for three? And Rhonda Marie wants to expand that network of support, which is why she helped found the Envisions Project. Filmmaker Lisa Lightborn Lay, who chronicled Rhonda Marie's Bruce Trail journey creating the documentary 8%, is on the board of the Envisions Project. The Envisions Project was created out of the Bruce Trail adventure. Um, Rhonda wanted to have um, an organization created to help her help other able people get on their adventure and go. After I finished, I had all these other abled athletes, they would get in touch with me and say, you know, I'd really like to do a Tough Mudder. I'd really like to hike the Grand Canyon. I'd like to do this 5K race in my hometown. I have no idea how to make that happen. And I, I don't know either, but I just kind of coerced 50 people to help me get 900 kilometers on trail. So Envisions was born from that. And no matter what your adventure is, Rhonda Marie wants you to know you're not alone on your journey. Disability has that impact, right? It makes you feel very much alone and stuck in this 
parameter that someone has just said, that's where you are, you're other, right? You don't have to live in that little box just because you've grown up in it. You just need to find someone who's willing to hear your voice and what it is that you want and dream and go from there. For Accessible Media in Kitchener, Ontario, I'm Anthony McLaughlin.